birth of an outbreak. While many horse owners understand the risks of not vaccinating, sometimes it takes an eye-opening event to show just how real the threats and consequences are. Australia was equine influenza free. Then in 2007, the equine influenza outbreak struck. August 8, 2007. 13 horses arrive in Melbourne, Australia from Japan. Nine horses, seven of which were infected, enter Spotswood Quarantine Station. Four, one of which was infected, continue on to Sydney and enter Eastern Creek Quarantine Station. August 17, 2007. An Irish stallion at Eastern Creek exhibits clinical signs consistent with the equine influenza virus. August 20, 2007. A horse in the neighboring stable follows suit. Analysis reveals five horses in Eastern Creek and seven in Spotswood are infected. August 24, 2007. An equine influenza outbreak is declared. Other cases are reported from New South Wales and Queensland. Investigations later revealed that these infected horses attended an event on August 17th near Maitland. October 10, 2007. The infection has now spread to 4,500 premises over an area of 278,000 square kilometers. Overall, in an area approximately half the size of Texas, more than 76,000 horses on 10,000 properties were infected. How does the equine influenza virus spread? A coughing horse may spread infected droplets as far as 50 yards. Combine that with the fact that a single horse infected with influenza can infect up to 10 others, and it's easy to see how the virus can be spread rapidly. Almost all unvaccinated horses that are exposed to equine influenza become infected, and unprotected foals may develop fatal viral pneumonia. How do you protect your horse when an outbreak occurs? There are three types of vaccines to choose from. Recombinant vaccine, modified live vaccine, killed vaccine. To help contain the spread of the virus in the 2007 outbreak, a recombinant vaccine that is only approved in Europe was selected. It provided a quick onset and long duration of immunity. And unlike other vaccines, it made it possible to distinguish between vaccine-derived immunity and infection-derived immunity. This was important to help track the spread of the virus among a now vaccinated population. The decision to use a recombinant vaccine worked. Australia was once again equine influenza free. If equine influenza is found in your area and your horse is unvaccinated, your choice of vaccine becomes more important than ever. A vaccine that works fast is a smart decision. Vaccinations are vital. Don't risk it on the road. While a disease may not be an identified threat where you live, it may be a potential risk in another area of the country. Traveling can take its toll on your horse's immune system, and that can make a horse more susceptible to infection. Make sure to consult with your veterinarian about possible health threats and the need for additional vaccinations and preventative measures. Quick tips to help keep your horse protected. Develop a vaccination protocol with your veterinarian based on the individual health needs of your horse. Consult with your veterinarian about possible health threats when traveling. Choose the right vaccines. Veterinarians are the best resource for quality information and products. Sign up for alerts on OutbreakAlert.com so you are notified when an equine-related disease is confirmed in your area. Brought to you by Mary Al Brand Vaccines and OutbreakAlert.com.